right, south of here at the border, authorities are now preparing for an unprecedented wave of migration as Title 42 set to expire on Wednesday. Right now, near El Paso, U.S. Border Patrol agents are apprehending more than 2,200 migrants every day. Here's ABC's Zoreen Shaw with the latest pushback on the policy. Over the past week, roughly 2,500 migrants have crossed into El Paso, Texas every day. City officials there declaring a state of emergency. I really believe that today our asylum seekers are not safe. The mayor saying the emergency declaration would give city authorities the resources to shelter migrants who have crossed the Mexican border. Millions of migrants are making the dangerous journey from Latin America, hoping to flee poverty and violence in their home countries. We saw 2,500 in the past six, seven days. We can imagine what it's going to be. That's doubling the flow. We want to make sure we're prepared for that and that we can react to that. Title 42 is a Trump administration policy implemented during the COVID-19 pandemic, allowing the government to expel migrants immediately as a public health risk. Texas Governor Greg Abbott predicting chaos if Title 42 is lifted. When you have people coming across the globe without knowing at all what their health status is, that almost by definition is a public health risk. California Democratic Senator Alex Padilla says the Biden administration has been planning for the end of 42 and places blame with the Trump administration. The prior administration starved the very departments and agencies of the resources they need, not just to, to, to uh, patrol the border, but to process these lawful uh, asylum claims. A U.S. Court of Appeals panel in Washington, D.C. blocked efforts led by 19 GOP states challenging the rule's expiration date of December 21st. Zoreen Shah, ABC News, Los Angeles. Also weighing in on this ongoing migrant crisis in the southern border, Texas Governor Greg Abbott. Today he was a special guest on ABC's This Week. The governor says with the expected end of Title 42, this could create chaos. He also says he is worried about the health risks this could pose. The governor was asked about those migrants who are coming to America because they're being persecuted. And Martha, this is very important because there are people across the globe who have a, a valid asylum reason to come to the United States that they can do so legally right now. The people who have the ability to come to the United States illegally get pushed further and further and further back the line every single day. With, with the thousands of illegal immigrants coming across the border. El Paso Democrats are also weighing in on the, situ on the situation. El Paso Congresswoman Veronica Escobar went on Fox News this morning to talk about what the El Paso region has been seeing. She is calling on more robust support from the State Department. Escobar says immigration is not just a border-only issue. Unfortunately, Congress has failed to act on changing our very outdated immigration laws for decades. Uh, the federal government, under you know, Congress's direction, has addressed immigration as a border-only issue. We really have to kind of zoom out and recognize this is a Western Hemispheric refugee crisis of historic proportions. Here's how seriously Democrats take the humanitarian and national security catastrophe of the border crisis they've created. This was Ohio Senator Sherrod Brown this morning. I don't hear a lot about immigration from voters except people on the far right that, that always want to gain political um, advantage by talking about it. Oh, it's just the far right, is it? Just the far right whose border towns and cities are thrown into chaos. Just the far right whose jobs and earnings are hit by low-wage illegal immigration. Just the far right whose teenage kids are dying of fentanyl poisoning. What a disgusting remark from a senator who claims to be a moderate. Well, I guess that's what passes for moderate in today's Democratic Party. Cruel, cold-hearted, open borders, ideological zealotry. Obviously, the crisis is out of control. Obviously, it's about to get even worse when Title 42 ends on Wednesday. Even Biden can see that as they've just begged Congress for short-term funding to boost security. But we need real long-term solutions. And part of that could be an idea proposed by our next guest, founder and president of Bienvenido US, Abraham Enriquez. Um, Abraham, great to see you. Um, look, it's a crisis, it's a short-term crisis, but the problem is it's, the crisis has been going on for so many years and nothing ever seems to happen. What's your thought on all this? Well, look, great to be here with you, Steve. Thank you so much for the invitation. Uh, last week, the, the, our press secretary, claimed that President Biden, since day one, has taken action to secure our border. 
But when you live in Texas like I do, it's very difficult to believe that. Uh, just in the two years that Biden has been in office, over 4 million apprehensions of illegal crossings have happened. Uh, more than 14,000 pounds of poisonous fentanyl have been seized this year alone. And also this year alone, 98 individuals on the U.S. terror watch list have been caught at our U.S. border. Uh, and the U.S. Border Patrol chief came out just the other day and said that in the past 48 hours, we've, had, we've seen about 16,000 mm -hmm. apprehensions, making it about 8,000 a day on average, which is interesting because Jen Johnson, Barack Obama's uh, Secretary of Depo Department of Homeland Security, said that about a thousand apprehensions a day was overwhelming. And now with Title 42 ending in just a couple of days, uh, experts are saying that we should we should feel about 10 to 12,000 apprehensions a day come January. So we've we far exceeded that a thousand uh, apprehensions a day count. But look, mainstream media politicians would like to come on and say that this. This is this. There is no crisis at the border, or that this crisis uh, really is too difficult to handle. But in reality, there's three simple things that we can do to fix it, basically overnight. And number one is that is to keep the Remain in Mexico policy, which was a bilateral agreement between two countries, to help both countries with the influx of immigration. Number two would be to keep Title 42, which is one of the most powerful policy tools that we have, to not only protect our communities, but to give manpower to our border patrol. And number three, which is probably the most ambitious, is it's easy to be Secretary Mayorkas when you live in your ivory towers out in Washington, D.C., and turn a blind eye to what's going down, and communities down at the border. Just yesterday, the mayor of El Paso uh, stated that there is an emergency state because of the overwhelming concerns of the city of El Paso handling what's going on uh, day to day. So why That's don't we move the Department man. of Homeland Security, right? why don't we move the DHS and Secretary Mayorkas to come work and live from El Paso or Yuma, Arizona or Brownsville, Texas, where they see their day to day lives being affected by what's going on with illegal crossings. I guarantee you, Steve, that when you move the, 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 the thousands of workers in DHS to come live down here in these border cities, this problem will be fixed basically overnight. I think that is actually such a simple and brilliant idea because that's the key thing here. They just don't care. They're not engaged in it. They're not trying to do anything about it. It's just a disaster. And I think your suggestion of moving the whole operation to the border, that's what they're supposed to be focused on anyway, protecting our border. I think it's a great idea. It's very positive. It's very practical. Abraham, um, I love what you do with your organisation. Um, thank you for being with us tonight. We'll see you soon. Well, Griff, the state of Texas is bracing for a migrant surge when Title 42 expires in just three days. We are joined now by the Texas Attorney General, Ken Paxton. So, Mr. AG, thanks for joining us. And it's first off, if you would tell us how you're preparing for this storm and what, what would you say is your most your strongest and most vulnerable aspects of your readiness? Well, look, because the numbers are so large, we've already been dealing with this over the last two years of the Biden administration. The numbers have gone up over 300 percent, and now those numbers are getting even larger. There's really no way that our state or any other state can deal with the consequences of the uh, Title 42 and these other policies that the Biden administration have, has pushed aside that have worked so well. So we're doing our best with our own law enforcement. We're doing our own best with the National, with the National Guard and the State Guard. But we, we are in for a, a, a horrific problem that the Biden administration has invited and has created. Well, last Tuesday, Texas governor, your governor, Greg Abbott, tweeted that Texas to resume border wall construction after reaching deals with private property owners. So is this or other policies pertaining to the border crisis implemented by Governor Abbott something the Biden administration should consider? Well, actually, we have a lawsuit with the Biden administration over this exact issue. The, the governor of our state, Governor Abbott, is doing the right thing by doing our part, the part that we can. But we have a border of over 1,200 miles that we can't afford to put uh, a wall along the entire part. The Trump administration had, uh, had begun that process, and Congress had actually appropriated money that, that the Biden administration is supposed to be using to build that wall, and they've refused to do that. So we've sued them over, there, uh, over that, saying, hey, look, Congress appropriated this money. You're required to spend it on that, and yet the Biden administration has, has let those resources uh, just sit idly, and also some of the product that, that was purchased by the Trump administration has just gone to waste. So, so is the wall the only policy or plan you think that Governor Abbott has uh, that the Biden administration consider, or is there something else? 
No, I mean, I think that's a long-term solution. That, that obviously isn't going to take care of the problem overnight, but that is definitely a long-term solution. I think enforcing Title 42, enforcing the Remain in Mexico program that we're already, we're back in litigation over, uh, I think those are key factors in how the Trump administration was successful in limiting illegal immigration. And all you have to do is compare the numbers from when Trump was in office two years ago to where they are now, increasing over 300% yeah. and potentially even more with Title 42 going away. We have policies and laws in place, if enforced, uh, are effective. Well, as you know, the court now is involved with the, the Title 42 uh, policy. But let me—let's right now, for a moment, take a look at the essence of the Biden administration's six-point plan post-Title 42. Um, again, in essence, surging resources, including uh, personnel, transportation, medical, and facilities to support border operations, speeding up processing to alleviate the burden on border towns, stepping up uh, prosecutions for unlawful entry, disrupting the transnational criminal organizations, you know, the TCO and collaborating with international and federal partners to deter irregular migration south of our border. So I ask you, does it seem sufficient and doable? Uh, no. I mean, I, it looks to me like they're just encouraging continued migration to, to our country. Everything that they've, they've promoted sends the message to the cartels, you guys can bring as many people here as you want, and then we'll process them. All this money appears to be doing is allowing for more processing of more people that the cartels are able to get here. And so I don't see how this actually works. I think this promotes further illegal immigration and becomes more and more a problem for border states. And really, we're all becoming border states because everybody can't stay in Texas and Arizona and New Mexico. And President Biden reportedly requested $3 billion from Congress to fight the surge, but Republicans, I'm understanding, not willing to approve the funding, saying that they want the border secured before money is spent. Help me make sense of that one. Look, I don't, I don't blame them for saying that. The, the reality is we've seen nothing from the Biden administration that shows that they actually want to secure the border, that they want to prevent illegal immigration. Everything that they've done suggests that more money would be used just to process more people obviously uh, allowing the cartels to make even more money. It, it's, it's a clear partnership between the cartels and the Biden administration, and it's a disappointing result for Texas and for the country because we're going to end up with more illegal immigration. Meanwhile, uh, on the state level, how are you helping the locals, the residents who live in these border towns? I mean, how are you uh, preparing them for this tsunami of humanity that's headed their way? Look, it's an overwhelming problem. I, I know that the state legislature has appropriated millions, hundreds of millions of dollars to try to help with the border crisis. I know that there are cities that are working with our governor to try to, to provide resources, but there's not enough resources to deal with the problem that's coming our way. There's not enough resources to deal with the problem that we have now. And that's what's so frustrating about what the Biden administration is doing. They're not listening to the people actually being affected on the border and in border states. And, and uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a huge problem for us. And what are those people who live on the, in those border towns who are personally uh, and profoundly impacted? What is it that they're saying to the Biden administration that you're saying they're not hearing? So I've been down there many times. I've talked to people who live along the border and they're primarily first and foremost worried about their safety. They've got people crossing their property who damage their property, who, who, who damage their livestock, who make them feel unsecure, that create a, a, you know, an increased crime risk for them in all kinds of ways, both personally and to their property. And I think that's the number one concern of people along the border is just the increased crime and their worry about their own personal safety and the, and the safety of their own families. Of course. And, and Mr. Attorney General, just if you give me 30 seconds left here, you know, I keep hearing Democrats and Republicans. I mean, are we going to get through this? This is a big problem for Americans. Can we uh, count on you as one of our leaders and to, to, to get some bipartisan cooperation to, to fix this immediately and in the long term? Yeah, and I, I'm for bipartisan cooperation. I'd love for Congress to, to, to look at the immigration system, but you've got to have a president that's willing to enforce the laws that we have and not just say, I don't agree with the laws, I'm not enforcing them. That's, that's a violation of our, his constitutional role, which is pretty significant. So, you know, you can pass all the laws you want with Congress and, and they can be good laws. And I think some of the laws that we have in place are good laws, but ultimately you have to have an administration 
because it's their responsibility to enforce those laws. And if you don't have that, we, we, we have the problem we have now. All right. Well, there are three levels of government. They all have to work together to get this taken care of, especially for the sake of the people, the good people there in Texas. I will say hook 'em horns, Mr. Attorney General <laughs> Ken Paxton. Thank you very much. Serious problem. Thank you for talking to us. Federal judges temporarily blocked the Biden administration from ending the Trump era remain in Mexico policy. This decision coming as border towns anticipate a huge, a bigger uh, influx of migrants as Title 42 is set to expire this coming Wednesday. Joining us now to discuss is Congresswoman Beth Van Dyne from House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee. Congresswoman, thanks for being here. Um, amazingly, the White House is now admitting that they're responsible. Of course, that's not exactly what they wanted to say, but they said it uh, from the White House briefing room. Here is Karine Jean-Pierre. Let me play the sound and get your reaction. Roll tape. What Americans should know is that the president uh, has done uh, has done the work uh, to deal with what we're seeing at the border since day one. So what we're seeing at the border, they admit, is Biden's work. What do you make of that? Well, I mean, look at it. We're, we're seeing untold amounts of people coming in. We're seeing untold amounts of drugs coming in. We're seeing untold amounts of, of, of terrorists that we've never seen before coming over our borders. And, you know, a question that people ask me is what happens to those people? What happens when they come into our, into our country? Where do they go? And I would say, you know, look at what happened in Oregon. Recently, they found 800 fields that had illegal um, um, marijuana fields being grown where they were using slave labor. People were held at mm. gunpoint. People were actually worked to death. These are people who are coming in illegally who are being human trafficked to areas like that. That we are seeing an administration is turning a blind eye to it. When you've got news outlets like ABC News calling this narco slavery, and you've got the response from the Biden administration saying, there's nothing wrong. We've got it handled. Everything is well. Everything is going well. This is an administration that is basically condoning um, what's happening with the drug cartels and condoning slavery. You know, the Democrat Party has been, I guess, will always be a party of slavery. And unfortunately, how do you negotiate with people who don't see this as a problem? You know, they, they now want an extra $3 billion, the Biden administration, but not to secure the border. Yeah. They want it to ensconce the immigrants that, that keep coming in. Let me just read from you, uh, for you from the, actually NBC News is saying this, when the ban ends, instead of being sent back across the border, more migrants will have the chance to stay in the U.S. and claim asylum. The extra money is needed to process, shelter, and transport them. In other words, not to secure the border, but to make sure that those who are here are safe and secure. They want to hire more people to let more people in. They want to hire more people to process them, to be able to act as cab drivers that are driving them through their country, putting them on buses and putting them on trains, putting them on planes to a city near you. That's what they want to do. There is no intention of this, of this administration to secure our border and protect our country. And we as, have seen it. And all they have to do, all they yeah. have to do, they want a plan. They keep asking, what's the Republican plan? Texas Republicans have actually come out with a fairly detailed plan. But in the meantime, I got an idea for you enforce our laws. Right. That's it. Well, and it you talk about simple. the human cost. First of all, you have eight, yeah. over 800 uh, immigrants themselves dying as a result of trying to get into the country. You have the fentanyl poisoning that's happening all over the country, yeah. tens of thousands of, of lives, and criminality. And, and I just want to play a soundbite of someone who just lost a brother uh, because of the immigrants coming in. Let me just roll that tape and get your reaction. President Biden, please close the borders. Stop saying that there's no crisis down there and that there's closed borders. It's killing Americans. Every day, when we have an influx of, of this many illegal immigrants coming in, it's going to directly impact our communities, like mine. Uh, my brother was murdered by an illegal immigrant that was um, deported twice in the past, was arrested two days before he was uh, murdered. This is what happens when you don't have a secure border, Congresswoman. I know you know it all too well. You've seen a lot of it in your community. Final word. Go ahead. Yeah. I say it's heartbreaking. Talk to him. Talk to the parents who have lost their children because of fentanyl. You know, it, it, we have to stop this. There's tools available to us. Stop taking them off the table. Stop empowering drug cartels and human traffickers and start protecting our country. Congresswoman Beth Van Dyne, thank you so much for coming in.